Is the good commissioner here, Sean Tindall, commissioner of Mississippi Department well, of Public Safety? Well, the good Safety. commissioner is not here because then he, well, I, can I see him. But he, hey, in the world of Zoom, we are all here together, no matter where there is or here is. So, commissioner, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. You know, it's uh, kind of funny. I'm doing this from my house this morning, and my wife wanted to make yeah. sure that we didn't have the dog food and the backsplash in the background from the kitchen. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I had to make sure I had the right angle before we set everything up. Is is that well timed or what? First of all, let's talk about the uh, HB seven seventy nine. Uh, we had talked about this for quite a while, and now apparently the governor has signed it into law. Does that become effective immediately? It does. It does. So um, that that was a, a effect upon passage, which was Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a link on our webpage set up for any family members that have survived. Um, you know, a, a COVID situation where a first responder and their family uh, has passed away, they'll be able to go to our website, download the application, and start the process. And for those that have already applied but were denied because the law hadn't been changed yet, we're going to go ahead and d- move those to the front. They won't have to reapply. We'll be reaching out right. to them and, and getting them set up. Do you have any idea what the number of those are? Uh, any possibility, any research done on that? We did. We did a survey back uh, in around October, and about mm-hmm. that time we had 37 uh, total that we had been able to uh, gather. Um, since that time, you know, obviously there's been some more, and the federal government actually extended theirs um, through 2023. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I imagine we'll have a number of more going into the future, and, and it's just something we're going to keep an eye on. and. Uh, we uh, original estimates were around 50. Uh, I, that's mm-hmm. kind of the the minimum, uh, I would say, at this point. I had talked to, it's been a couple of three weeks now, a couple of legislators, one in the House, one in the Senate, and I'd ask about this, and, and I think both have said that they've done everything they could to minimize the red tape to pass this on so it's not delayed that much. You feel the same way about this bill? I do. I do. You know, and and one of the things that makes the death benefit fund, um, uh, I won't say a challenge, but but from our standpoint, Mm -hmm. we have to determine whether or not the death was caused in the line of duty. And and sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's sometimes it's not. Um, So with with the COVID death benefit, one of the things that was really hard to ascertain was whether or not it was contracted. Uh, in the line of duty. So what they've done with this is they've taken out that causation element where if you're a first responder and you died of COVID, your automatic, your family and your survivors are automatically entitled yeah. to this death yeah. benefit. So it cuts because, out the red I mean, tape. If, if it, yeah, if it came into a court, uh, such a legal proceedings to justify that, there's no way to know. There's absolutely positively no way to know. It, it's, it's probably more likely it did that, that did not but who knows? So I'm glad that that's taken care of. Many other things to talk about. Let's go to the uh, the uh, the troopers class. I want to talk about that first of all. Where are we with that one? Is it an opening uh, now registration? Give me a, an update on that. Registration is closed, and so this will be a first time class. This this will be the first time we've ever had a, a trooper mm-hmm. school that's consisted of all prior sworn certified law enforcement officers. So. Um, it, it, we uh, put the notices out. Uh, it closed, I want to say, about two months ago, a month ago. Uh, so we're in the process of screening all those applicants. We had about 200 um, that applied, and uh, we're, we've done the physical. Uh, we've done some of the uh, background checks, and we're working on uh, getting some of their test scores back to see where they, where they fall. And um, we anticipate that we'll be starting uh, in May and uh, really excited about this opportunity to bring in a a class of prior certified law enforcement officers uh, into the Mississippi Highway Patrol. If uh, the one, the remaining ones who make it, what, when will uh, the graduation day be? I want to say that we have it's it's a it's a twelve week class, and I won't mm-hmm. believe we'll be de- be done sometime in July. Uh, I got you. Is when we think we'll be done, and and hopefully, you know, one of the things we're asking for is trying to get the mm-hmm. Mississippi Highway Patrol total numbers up to six hundred. Uh, right now, we hover around 500. We have about 30 retire a year. We have a lot more that can retire. Um, so we feel like it's important to keep pushing towards that 600 number. That's that's the number yeah. we were at in around 2007. And uh, when you look statistically at where we are, uh, you know, just homicides in the state, uh, drug overdoses, 
um, and, and, you know, crime, uh, the reality is you know, it's been on a rise and, and we feel like having more law enforcement is a way to deter that crime. And we want to get those numbers up to 600 so we can make Mississippi a safer place. Yeah, we were just talking about the, to the guys in Washington, D.C. and talking to Fair and uh, mentioned something about the uh, vast amount of narcotics now coming across the border. And it's more important now than ever before because and when the news hits every once in a while, we'll, we'll see some of these busts and we're just shocked at the amount of uh, narcotics that they are they are catching. Uh, you want to comment yeah. on that? Absolutely. You know, we've been working with Colonel Maxwell and Deputy Commissioner mm-hmm. Davis over at NBN trying to uh, – do our part to really, really uh, make an emphasis on drug bust and, and how we patrol with their interdiction teams on the interstates, uh, trying to cut down on this drug trafficking that's coming into our state, particularly fentanyl. Um, I'm actually going down to Florida uh, in Tallahassee, meeting with public safety commissioners across the southeast to talk about the border crisis um, and the impact it's having on our communities with human trafficking and drug trafficking. I mean, there's just a, a massive amount of drugs and human trafficking coming across the border. And so mm-hmm. um, we're working together uh, with those teams trying to address that. And again, I go back to 2007 when we had over 150 NBN agents and, and now we're at about 80. Um, you know, there's a direct correlation when you look at the number of law enforcement officers in the increase in over, overdose deaths mm-hmm. in our state. And, you know, we're, we're trying to get those numbers up so that we can, you know, make our streets safer. Commissioner, we are waning down to the last uh, few weeks now in the, in the session. Any overview of that? Any bills that are still alive that you want to uh, spotlight and uh, your thoughts on the session? Well, it, you know, it's certainly been an interesting session. I'll, I'll start with that. It's um, <laughs> been a lot of back and forth. And, you know, I know the tax cuts have seemed to take a, a big spotlight here towards the end, which, quite frankly, mm-hmm. isn't unexpected. But from our standpoint, from an agency standpoint, uh, we're, we're trying to get our new headquarters building, which we think would be uh, instrumental in the future of our agency. As it stands now, we, we've got 11 divisions, and, and they're all spread out. None of them are in one building together. Uh, so it'll help us improve our communications and working relationships amongst our law enforcement divisions if we're under one roof. Um, I, I'm meeting with the lieutenant governor this week to go over some final plans on that, and hopefully we get that bill done. Um, we've also uh, got our trooper pay raise bill that, that um, is coming through, and, and uh, I'm really proud of Colonel Ginn and, and the leadership at Highway Patrol. The original proposal had basically the same pay raise for everybody throughout the ranks, and, and I got with them, and, and we worked together and came up with a proposal that would have actually resulted in the colonel getting the smallest pay raise um, and the road guys, the, the red legs, the boots out there on the road, getting the largest pay raise. And, and that was mm. a sacrifice to him. But as he stated, that those young men and women uh, that are joining our ranks, they need it more than I do. So I really appreciated that. Yeah. Look, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it very, very much. I, I, I know you got a busy schedule and you've got to go. But uh, anything else that you wanted to mention? No, just want to thank our friends in the legislature uh, for passing this bill. You know, obviously it's yep. very important to the sheriffs and police chiefs and first responders across the state, and, and we're glad it got done and glad to be a part of it. Well, thanks for your leadership, too. It's uh, one of the reasons that uh, it did pass, HB 779. The uh, commissioner of Mississippi...